Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video and hopefully this week is a little bit of a shorter one as I'm feeling a little bit feverish and as you know it's not a good idea to do that with a clumped brain, record stuff I mean. So this is also my 15th attempt to record this intro so hopefully it will go through now. So what we're going to look at today is a OSL script to rotate normals. And this is the solution to a problem I never knew existed. Until Adam San told me that if you rotate textures in Octane using the UV transform or any projection inside of Octane, then your normals wouldn't look correctly unless you turn them back into the original angle. So I was tempted to write a script to solve this and while I was doing it I thought maybe that is actually a good tutorial. So finally let's grab your coffee and let's dive in. Welcome to this masterclass in scene making. So we have a plane and a light source and now let's go and make a material. So what I'm going to do is make an octane glossy material here. Let's engage that and then drag in one of our normal maps that I created here. So here we go. And then plug that into the normal slot and of course assign the material here. Here we go. So let's also go to the roughness and set the roughness to 0.25 or something a little bit more rough. When we move our camera, you can see this is working quite well. And when we move our light source, so let's move that around, you can see the normal acts according to what I intended it to make or to do. So far, so good. So now let's say we are in a creative environment and the art director says, okay, so we want to have that turned on its head. So we want silver wing on its head down here. This is no problem. Actually, you could just rotate the plane here, but let's imagine this is a little bit more complicated. So I go to my transform, so UV transform, click that, and then go to the rotation set, and then rotate my image here to be 180 degrees. And yes, sort of works, but now when you look at it directly, you can see now the normal map is actually inverted. So this is not what we want. So this sphere goes inward and the silver wing goes also inward. You can see it a little bit better if I turn around the light here. So it's actually inverted. What we can do now here obviously is we could for the 180 degrees, we could just invert the normal map again and get back to our old behavior. But what if we are going with 45 degrees? then it's not as simple all of a sudden as this one is turning the normals in directions that we can't fix easily. So of course a normal rotate script to the rescue. So I'm going to use the other material here and make the same thing. So what we are going to do is go with a UV transform and set it to 45 degrees. And then what this lets you do is go to the float here and make the angle of 45 degrees. Now this is a little bit complicated because this one here goes from zero to one and one is 360 degrees. So what we actually want to do is one divided by 360 times 45 here. And now we are back to our old normal. So this is right. So if we turn our light source and let's see if we can like when we look at our light source in context to our normals here, you can see those are behaving correctly. So the reflection of the light is actually where it should be. All right, let's go and see how this is working and how we can script something like this. Alrighty, small bonus round here. So if you're wondering how I made those normals, this is the scene for it. So if we go outside of the camera, you can see this is just all geometry here. And what I did is go to the octane settings and set this to info channels, then to shading normals. And then the last step you want to make is orient your camera in the set axis position. Otherwise you get different colors and this is not what you want. So 
we go inside of the camera and we can see this is the normal blue that you would expect. So this is the right orientation. As a bonus bonus, what you can do is get a parallel camera out of this. So if you go to your camera, you can go to projection perspective parallel here, and you can see there's nothing changing in the octane view, unless you go into the camera tag and set this to autographic, and then you have a true parallel camera. All right, back to scripting now. Welcome to scripting land. We are using open shading language to get our rotation done. And I'm going over this step by step so you can easily follow. If you, however, don't want to follow and just want to have the script, you can write that off of the thumbnail. No, I'm just kidding. It's linked down in the description below. Usually I share my stuff with Patreon only, but this time I make an exception. So I hope my patrons are okay with that. Before we do anything, it is very important to work within the right color space. This can be a bit misleading as Octane communicates with the texture as long as it is directly plugged in here. So if we set this to a different gamma, there's no real change here. But as soon as we have a OSL script in between, then the contact here is broken. So we have to make sure we have the right colors from the start. So either you set the legacy gamma to one, or better yet, set the texture to non-color data. Here we go. So now we can go and bring in our OSL script. Let's start by bringing in any OSL to work off of. So let's hit tab here and go with OSL and then go with the first one, the add OSL. So if we open the script editor here, you can see it's very easy and we can learn how a OSL is set up here. So we have a first line here where we can name the shader and this is named add and we will see in a second why this is. And then we have a section where we define our in and outputs. So a color input called A and the same called B and those are reflected here. And then we have an output called C and this is basically what comes out of here. And then we have a section where we can do math with our values. So B is added to A and this is why we have an add shader here. And then it's stored in C, which is the output. So very simple concept and very easy to understand. So let's rebuild this shader to our needs. First of all, I want to rename the shader to normal rotate. Here we go. And then we need to name our inputs correctly. So the color A would be normal. This is where we plug in the normal and then we have an angle. Here we go. And if we try to compile now, this gives us an error because A and B are not used here. So what we can do is copy and paste those here. And let's just see if that works. Yes, the compilation is okay. We have an update error here. So it's best to just get the shader somewhere connected so it will update. So if we compile again, you can see now those names are reflected here. Let's actually take our normal and plug it into the normal slot here. And let's do this like this so we can see what we are doing. Also, let's go to the shader, go to specular and set it to black. So we don't have a reflection here right now. So we can concentrate on the normal. If you follow this channel for a longer time and watch some other normal videos, uh, I mean videos related to normals, then this next step might be familiar. So what we need to do is get the representation of the texture into the real normal space. So the real normals are vectors and vectors are just points in space that are pointing somewhere based on the R, G and B values of the texture. And real normal space goes from minus one to plus one. While this can't be held in a single image texture, this has to be squeezed in a value range from zero to one. So we want to unfold that from zero to one to minus one to plus one. All right, surprise chart time here. So what we have here is the image values. So black is zero and white is one. And we want to stretch it from minus one to plus one. So what we need to do here is get this stretched out by multiplying it by two and then subtracting one from it. So we just change the range from two to one again. And then we have our full coverage. 
So let's do this in the code. Welcome back to cryptic letters land. So what we want to do is first in the first step, get the normal and get the value times two. So it's very easy to do that for showcasing. Let's just use that. We don't want to have the angle here. So let's just delete it. And then we just type in times two. Here we go. Then compile. And we can see, yes, the normal is now brighter. To get this into the right space, we have to subtract one from it. So actually what we need to do is get in some parentheses here. Here we go. And then back here, minus one. And then compile again. And this gives us very strange colors. This is because half of the information is now in the negative range, which is okay. Now is a good time, I think, to introduce the concept of variables. Since we don't want to do that to our output only, we want to take this information and do something else with it. So we can take whatever we did here and store it within a name, a variable. So let's just do this. I'm going to go here and hit return to get another line. Then I want to classify what variable I'm going to do. In my case, this is a vector. And then I'm going to give it a name, normalize, for example, and then I define it. So we have to equal, and then I just can take this one here and put it down here. The formula is now stored inside of the name. And you never have to forget to get a semicolon back here. Otherwise, you get a compilation error. This happens very often to me. In order to see if that worked, we can just use this one here and instead of that whole formula, now get this out of here. Of course, this warns us that the angle attribute here is not used, but if we render again, you can see that we get the same output. So our vector variable has worked. To avoid confusion, let's actually explain why I can display a vector. So basically, R, G and B values, which are our colors, are vectors. So instead of R, G and B with a vector, it's X, Y and Z, but those can be interchanged and open shading language is smart enough to do that behind the scenes. Next, let's do what we actually came here to do. Remember, we want to rotate our normal or our vector. So we can do that with a bunch of vector math. But also, since this is OSL, there are a bunch of predefined formulas in there. To find those formulas, I usually go to the open shading language specification and search for it there. This is a PDF that can be downloaded on GitHub and also in my description down below. So I want to search for rotate and enter and this leads us straight to the right place. So this is the formula we are going to use. And if you're not familiar, what's happening in there is we have a point which is sort of a vector and then we need to bring some information into it. So basically, we have a point Q. This is our normal map. Then we have to define the angle in which we want to rotate. And then we have to define an axis. And this is the vector serving as the axis that we also have to bring in here. So let's get this going inside of our script. Let's get this in our script by adding another variable and we want to get another vector here. So vector, so this is for vector rotation equals and then we start our formula by going rotate and then a parentheses. Don't forget the semicolon at the end, we can already print that here. So the order was first we need to bring in the map we want to rotate, which is the normalize here. Here we go. Then comma to separate them, then we want to bring in the angle. And then last but not least, what we want to bring in here is a point, which defines the axis around we want to rotate. We don't have that yet, so we need to define that next with, yes, another variable. Okay, as this channel is about deeper knowledge and not just glossing over the information, so you write down whatever I write on screen, let's actually go and explore the normals thing a little bit more deeper. So if I go to my sphere in polygon mode and enable the normals here, polygon normals, you can see those black lines appearing. And basically those are the orientations that are perpendicular to the polygon surface. 
What you need to know is that every one of those normals, basically the black line represents their set direction. So by defining the direction of the rotation, what we do is get the rotation axis going. So what we can do is rotate the pixels of the shader along the normal. And basically this is what we do. But here every polygon has a normal, but in the shader space, every ray that hits an object has a normal. So the texture is actually rotated around every pixel, so to speak, not just the polygons. Not sure, this might confuse you even more than before, but I hope not. I hope you understand now a little bit closer what we are doing. Okay, let's actually define a vector with the set direction. So let's go here and get another line. Yes, and we want to get a vector here. Here we go. And let's call it point. Make sure the first letter here is capital, otherwise it will be a function and we get problems because point is another thing as a vector or a float. Then next we want to define a vector. And to do that, we have to go within parentheses mode again and then go with 0, 0, 1. And this is x, y, z, and the axis of z is 1, so we are rotating around z axis, as we explained before. Now that we have defined our point, our axis, let's actually bring it where it needs to be. So back in the formula for the rotation as our rotation axis, let's go with the variable and put it into the output so we can see what we've done here, and hit compile. As you can see, it complains about something. So if you look closer, it expects a vector float vector combination. And what we given it is a vector 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 combination. Why is that? Basically, the angle is a color and a color is seen as a vector, as I explained before. So what we can do about it to make it a float is just use one aspect of the vector. So if you think about R, G and B, we can just use the R channel for that. So it's very easy. We just write brackets behind that and then define the channel that we want, which is zero for red, one would be green and two would be blue. Now that we've done that, let's actually compile. And yes, that worked. So now what we can do is use a float texture and then pipe it into the angle and see, yes, we can actually rotate our normal map now. Very nice. You might have noticed this already just now. So if I go to zero and then go to one, you can see this is not a full 360 degrees rotation. This is merely less than 90 degrees. And the reason for that is that everything inside of 3D is calculated in radians. So on top of what we did here, we need to translate the input here into degrees and then into radians. But this is not very difficult as there's a formula for that as well. So what I want to do is declare a float since we need a float and then call it something like rats or something for radians and then equals and then this is the formula. So radians and then I put into parentheses whatever I want to get out in radians, which is our angle. Now our angle is the vector again. So we need the non-vector formula here. So this one, so let's copy and paste it in here. What this is doing right now is getting an angle from zero to an angle of one converted into radians, which we don't want. We want zero to 360 in order to make this work. So what we need to do is get this times 360 here. So let's compile and let's see if this is working. So if we turn that, now there's something happening, but it's not what I want. And this is because our angle here is still stuck. So we need to exchange that for our rats. Here we go, compile. And now that should work. Yes, see, now it's 360 degrees when we go from zero to one. Perfect. Let's actually try and put that into the normal slot and then rotate it. It sort of works, but it looks very strange. And this is because the normal here expects a zero to one value. So we have to remap that to the old value space. So what we need to do is reverse this aspect of the formula. So let's just copy and paste that as this is always faster than to write it again. And instead of this one here, what we need to do is 
plus one and then divided by two. Here we go. Now, obviously, we don't want to do that to the normal, but to our output here. Here we go. And then we need to rename that because two times the same variable wouldn't work. So let's call this unnorm. Here we go. And then what we need to do is get this into the output. Compile. And yes, this looks now great. So we can rotate our angles. And if we then get this into our normal here, then we have the right result, finally. Small in-between bonus. So you might have noticed that I can get my notes to be very precisely arranged. And this is because of those both buttons here. So with one, you can arrange your notes to the grid. And with the other, you can arrange your notes to other notes as well as the line. And this sped up my workflow so much as I always like to have very tidy notes. Finally, let's look at some applications here and why I did use the port here to define an angle instead of getting the value just to be typed in here, which is also a possibility, by the way. Welcome to a bunch of cubes. Basically, this is the overlying theme of our series here to prove my points with the least effort in scene making. But to be honest, I think it's working. And if it's working, it's not wrong. So we have a cube distributed by a cloner. And this cloner is set to render instance to get random colors on those cubes like this. And this random coloring can be used to rotate our image texture. I also made an OSL script to do that. I link a video where I show that in the upper right corner. But right now I'm using the distort mesh UVs to do that. So when I change the angle here, you can see those maps are randomly rotating based on the color that comes in here. To prove a point here, let's set this to minus 360. And you can see that the normals are very crazy now. So if I then take the random color here and move it into our angle slot, then this gets corrected. And although those maps are rotated in different angles, they all show up correctly. Right now, this only works with a minus 360 degrees. So if I go to minus 180, we are back to the start and our normal maps look off again. So what you can do to fix that is go to tab and go with a range map. Let's fan this out here. And then what we need to do is get the color in here. So the half between 0 and 1 is 0.5. Same as the half between 0 and 360 is 180. So what I need to do is remap our output value between 0 and 0.5 and then get this into the angle. And this should be working again. And yes, it is. So now our angles are correct again. I wish there was a way that Octane would do that internally without moving our OSL script before that and do all this stuff. But this is how it is and this is how you can correct it. So hopefully you liked this video and got something out of that. After last week's foam extravaganza that had a unparalleled response, I also got a lot more new Patreons. So thank you all so very much for subscribing. I hope I can make it up to you with some more really nice ideas in terms of tutorials. But you can actually help me with that by letting me know what you want in the comments down below. Now, without further ado, let's thank those who made this video possible, my Patreons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Frickin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, Render King. Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Bavana, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Ludger, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quok an Dang, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, 
Shamos Johnson, Shiro2049, Tagori M. Vileila, Terry Wayne Ranson, Touch My Render, Yasin Rupp, and Shi Bue Xiang. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Welcome to the after show circle. I'm burning up by now. It takes a lot of focus to speak clearly, so I'm making this short. If you're still watching, thank you very much for being with me all this time. I don't think this video will get as many views as the foam one. You are of course more than welcome to prove me wrong here. Now, if you want to show your support, you can post a counterclockwise or a clockwise arrow button in the comments down below. This is the last tip of this video. If you are on Windows, you can hit Windows plus the dot key and then there is this emoticon window popping up where you can type and search your emoticons. As always, I wish you a amazing start into the week, a healthy week, a overall great time and happy turning. Bye.